Hey, good Wednesday, everybody. Hopefully we're having a wonderful middle of the week out there and uh, still watching a couple things out there in the tropics for potential development, including the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I think either way, though, we're going to see impacts through much of the state of Florida uh, with very heavy rainfall that could last for a while. So I am uh, watching for a bit of a flooding risk down there to the Sunshine State over the next week or so. Also looking at the potential for a big time cold front to kind of try to sweep on through portions of the east, that could potentially bring uh, our first mountain snow of the year up to the northeast. You folks in Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, and upstate New York, and even through Maine, I know haven't heard from you in a while, but uh, it's uh, it's getting to that time of the year where we can start kind of discussing a little bit more of wintry time uh, precipitation here. As again, we're you know we're into October, so it's not uh, unheard of to get snow up in that part of the country this time of year. Now I will ask if you haven't already subscribe, please do so. Like the video, comment, let me know where you're watching from, and consider sharing with somebody out there uh, that you think might find it useful. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right on into things. Now, taking a look at uh, our infrared loop here, uh, we do have what is Hurricane Kirk uh, continuing to kind of spin away here uh, over portions of the Atlantic. Now, a pretty strong uh, Category 1 hurricane still expected to reach Category 3 status. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Category 4 storm. It's not out of the question with this one. Uh, other than that, we do have an area to watch behind that on satellite, blowing up some convection, and then just a big area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms uh, into the Gulf of Mexico that we are still uh, monitoring for potential development. Now, latest from the National Hurricane Center, uh, again, Kirk is a 80 mile an hour category one hurricane and continues to strengthen uh, with pressure down around 984 millibars. Uh, and then as uh, for our little way behind it, a 90% chance of developing very likely to become a tropical depression or storm today before the day is over. Uh, and then we have, of course, our area in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of people have been chattering about just due to uh, its kind of similar proximity to where Helene formed. Uh, I can basically guarantee you right now, luckily, this will not be a problem for uh, upstate South Carolina or western North Carolina or you folks in Tennessee. Now, it could be a problem for folks in Florida, maybe South Georgia, if it takes a slightly further track than, uh, excuse me, a slightly further north track than uh, it is currently anticipated to. But again, not a, a big inland threat with this one like it was uh, with Helene, uh, but we are still worried about flooding into Florida just due to uh, kind of the nature of this system. All right, let's talk about Kirk a little bit here, and you'll already notice on satellite, just a pretty beautiful looking storm here. We've got uh, these big banding features. We've got a lot of divergence aloft kind of bringing this uh, flow out from the storm. So uh, definitely a pretty looking system, and we're allowed to say that because it's not going to impact anybody. So definitely something that we can uh, kind of just uh, marvel at nature's beauty here as we are again expecting a Category 3 major hurricane right on the border of Category 4. So uh, don't be surprised to see this hit Category 4 status, but I'll zoom out here. Uh, and looking at the track here, here's, a, I'll go ahead and circle Bermuda. Uh, I'll circle the uh, Antilles here and into Puerto Rico. Uh, well, it would help if I picked a color that you could see, wouldn't it? Uh, there we go. Uh, so you'll notice the track of this storm well away from any sort of islands and very far away from the continental United States. So not a problem at all for us. Uh, that area behind it, again, getting better organized on satellite here. We are seeing um, kind of a general spin here under uh, this canopy of cloud tops. So again, very likely that gets up, uh, upgraded to a tropical depression uh, sometime before today is over. Now, we move this ahead in a time. Let me back this up just a little bit for you uh, into, we'll say, this afternoon and go into this evening. Again, uh, Kirk expected to continue to strengthen into a major hurricane through the next couple of days. Behind it, very likely that Leslie will form uh, here, again, with that wave that we just mentioned. And all indications are right now pretty confident that both of these storms curve out to sea. Uh, Kirk absolutely will. Leslie, it's a bit of a closer call, but uh, we'll, we'll see. And I'll show you some ensembles here in a second. Uh, but still note, this one could become a hurricane as well, maybe a major hurricane uh, once again out into the main development region of the Atlantic. So uh, definitely some rough seas through the uh, Caribbean islands here, but uh, again, no major direct impacts with either one of the storm systems. Uh, and I'll even show you the Euro AI model. This is the model that is kind of the closest to bringing this towards anybody that uh, would get uh, some sort of direct impacts. And you see, uh, again, the storm on a much further south trajectory, mainly because it develops later on. But again, uh, the NHC is expecting this to develop today. So, uh, you know, the, the southern track is already slightly more likely. But even with this, uh, we're still not seeing any sort of direct, uh, you know, landfall on any 
uh, islands out here just kind of increased surf and rough wave action. So, uh, you know, the worst case scenario still isn't really all that bad, I would say. Uh, and if we look at ensembles, these are the European ensembles. And again, these are the ensembles that are the closest to land. Even then, only one ensemble out of 50 or so uh, would make landfall over any of these islands, all the others, uh, again, well north. So we'll monitor it. But uh, again, I'm feeling pretty confident here that we're trending in the right direction with the storm uh, for it to eventually turn out to sea. So uh, not super worried about that. Alrighty, let's talk about our Gulf of Mexico disturbance. Again, an area that I think a lot of people are probably a little on edge about just because of what happened with Helene, and rightfully so. Anytime you get a big time storm and then you hear uh, that another one might be right behind it, you know, I, I would be uh, concerned too. Uh, again, though, this will not be another Helene. This will not be anything close to Helene. In fact, you folks, again, in South Carolina, North Carolina, probably won't even get a taste of this storm. Uh, that is, if it ever even forms. Um, now, uh, again, we are still looking at the possibility of formation, but basically, just to give you background on the setup here, uh, we've got all sorts of energy here in the Gulf of Mexico, all sorts of uh, areas of enhanced vorticity and uh, fort maxes. Uh, and basically, it's just a matter of if one of those areas can fight off the others and become dominant. Uh, and some of the models do that here towards the Bay of Campeche uh, over the weekend and then try to pull it towards Florida as maybe a tropical storm. The highest impossibility would be a low-end hurricane, but probably really, uh, again, just a tropical storm. And you can see that here uh, on our latest GFS model. I'll pull this ahead at a time. Uh, this is getting into Sunday. You'll notice low pressure trying to form here, but notice how elongated it is. It might be kind of hard to see, but this is the isobar for this closed low. I mean, uh, this is a really messy low pressure. This is not a tight hurricane by any means. Um, and then you'll notice kind of what happens is that vorticity on the backside uh, fights off the other vorticity. It's breaking off. We have different areas of spin uh, and overall just a mess that kind of just sits in the Gulf for a little while uh, and then eventually tries to cross over Florida. Again, it's just a messy system uh, with multiple areas of enhanced spin uh, and then, you know, brings rain, unfortunately, for a while through the next seven to 10 days on that model. Now, we'll take a look at the European model, uh, and it's kind of a, a similar situation here. Again, low pressure tries to develop into the Bay of Campeche, uh, but it's a mess. And then look at this. Again, multiple areas of kind of enhanced spin fighting each other uh, for dominance here. And because of that, the storm never really gets its act fully together. Uh, and uh, it's just this big blob of kind of rain and uh, cyclonic flow here into the Gulf that slowly works over the state of Florida sometime early next week. Um, and then behind it would potentially clear out. But even the European look at this. I mean, we've got rain through the state of Florida really from uh, this weekend all the way out into the uh, beginning of next week, the middle of next week. Uh, and then even towards the end of next week. So uh, the biggest concern right now, I would say, is just how much rain we're going to get. We could see a flooding threat with this. Um, but again, I don't want to rule out a storm. And I'll show you the Canadian model. It's a little more aggressive. Uh, and here's the reason. The Canadian, again, gets that area in the Bay of Campeche uh, to really become the dominant vorticity here. Uh, it kind of fights off the other areas. And because of that, there is some gradual strengthening into a tropical storm uh, and eventually even probably a low-end Category 1 hurricane here. Uh, this is next Wednesday. You'll notice a much more defined storm system here working towards the state of Florida. Uh, and with a situation like this, we would have a higher wind threat and a higher storm surge threat. So uh, it is something to monitor and then again makes landfall in the state sometime uh, next Wednesday and then is out of here quicker uh, than the other solutions as well. So that, that's kind of the higher end solution right now. I think the other models are probably more of uh, an average to lower end solution, but there is that high end possibility that again, we could get a hurricane out of this uh, or at the very least a tropical storm. And we'll take a look at some ensembles here. Uh, latest GFS ensembles. Again, the development of this is an absolute mess. Where does it develop? Uh, does it kind of meander for a little bit? Uh, that's that's a pretty likely, you know, I think uh, possibility that this just hangs out in the Gulf for a while. But eventually, again, during the middle of next week, this is expected to finally push east uh, and cross right over the state of Florida. Uh, anywhere from the Big Bend down to the Keys is still in that play. But uh, again, if there's no center of circulation, it doesn't really matter where it crosses. The entire state's going to get some rain. Uh, but if we do have a more defined storm system, then where it crosses will be a bigger deal. Now, uh, the European ensembles actually have come together a little bit more in cluster here. You'll notice a much more defined kind of flow here from east to west with a, a storm system. Uh, again, most of these European ensembles are tropical storm and a pretty weak one at that, but you got a couple in there that are sprinkled in as higher end tropical storms to maybe a low end hurricane. Uh, 
Uh, again, I think that would be kind of the ceiling with the system, but most likely uh, kind of just a tropical storm mess uh, here through early next week. But really, rainfall, again, will become kind of the biggest threat here. Uh, and you can see some of these totals, again, this is through the next 10 days through South and Central Florida. I mean, we're talking half a foot of rain, maybe more than that, uh, you know, and spots could get uh, easily more than that, maybe more than a foot through that entire uh, you know, time frame. So uh, yeah, again, I would I would watch for excessive rainfall, uh, but I'm not super worried about power outages or uh, big storm surge or big wind by any means, which is kind of the one saving grace here with this system. All right, let's take a look at what's going to happen through the lower 48 here in the near and long term. Uh, and uh, luckily, we're kind of in a lull right now. Not a whole lot going on. You'll take a look at satellite imagery, and we've just really got this strong zonal flow across much of the northern tier of the country. Now, we are going to have a little bit of a trough uh, that kind of dips down through the northern tier of the country later today uh, that bring a shot of some cold air advection. But for most of the United States, uh, pretty, pretty calm conditions out there. And you can even see that on uh, our kind of radar and uh, watches and warnings map here. Again, the only precipitation showing up is up through uh, portions of the Northeast. We do have this weak front trying to work on through, uh, bringing some rain from Ottawa back down through portions of New York State, Western Pennsylvania, and even some scattered showers through the Virginias. Uh, and then also some uh, kind of rain ongoing here up through extreme northern Minnesota, through the UP of Michigan, as again, a disturbance kind of swings on through here, but really more of a, a Canada kind of storm than anything. Uh, they're showing up on radar and then a little bit of rain coming up here uh, down towards the Little Rock area. Uh, we could be seeing a little bit of rain showing up here or actually and this could also be uh, something else that's just showing up on radar. I'll have to let's see if I move it ahead if it fades away a little bit. Um, yeah, that, I think that's that's probably just radar having a little bit of a moment. So uh, ignore that. But uh, again, really, really nice conditions for most of us. Now, it is going to be windy and relatively dry into the northern Rockies through the next couple of days. So we do have a bit of a um, kind of fire risk here in the red. So if you don't have to burn anything, don't. Same story out here through the Minneapolis area, through Sioux Falls, uh, even back uh, up through kind of the UP of Michigan and northern Wisconsin, uh, and then high winds back into portions of Montana today. You folks into California, it's been hot. It's going to stay hot. Uh, so just not really a fun time for you folks. Not really the Halloween spirit, if you will, uh, like uh, you might have been hoping for. All right, uh, rainfall over the next a little bit here. Uh, again, I'll move this ahead into time. You'll notice a couple showers possible into the mid-Atlantic and northeast today. Definitely uh, don't rule it out. Same story up through northern Minnesota, the UP into northern Wisconsin. Uh, again, those areas could see some showers. Also, the state of Florida. Now, we get into overnight tonight. Things clear out. We get into our Thursday afternoon. Again, pretty nice. Don't rule out maybe uh, a couple of, again, isolated showers into the western Carolinas. We're getting a little bit of tropical flow in here uh, that could maybe, you know, squeeze out a little bit of moisture, uh, but not enough to cause big time concerns. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, through western North Carolina flooding wise, uh, those creeks and streams got, you know, just so much rain and uh, it, it kind of changed the terrain. So a little bit of rain here is not going to bring it up to new levels by any means. Uh, in fact, it, well, we're probably back down towards old levels at this point, uh, just due to how quickly that terrain can kind of bring that runoff. Um, but should we get any kind of heavy rain event, we would have to worry for more landslides. Uh, but I don't see that really being a concern tomorrow. This is pretty light rain, uh, more of a showery setup than anything else. Um, so again, that gets us through Thursday and Thursday evening. And uh, again, the rest of the country pretty dry, maybe some showers and storms along the Gulf Coast as our Gulf disturbance kind of gets going a little bit more. All right, height anomaly map here. Um, again, just a lot of zonal flow ongoing here. And generally, zonal flow just brings kind of average-like weather, slightly more uh, probably mild and muggy weather than you would want. Um, but generally speaking, uh, speaking excuse me, uh, pretty average weather. But you'll notice to the north, look at all of this blue up in Canada. This is well below average temperatures uh, and a couple storm systems as well up there. So winter is on the way. Uh, and all of that blue you're seeing up into Canada is slowly going to ooze south over the next couple of months. Uh, and pieces of it are going to break off and kind of ooze south sooner than the next couple of months. And here's one uh, that I'm watching right here. Now, by the weekend, uh, we do have a couple of areas of some troughing showing up, kind of mixed into the flow here. Not super strong by any means, uh, but enough that we will need to watch for, uh, you know, maybe some areas of rain to kind of form on the diverging side of these troughs. Um, but overall speaking, 
uh, not super strong. Now, the one back out west is probably definitely a stronger one and one that I think on down the road uh, could bring a nice taste to fall through portions of the country. So you'll notice that swings through the east, uh, then swings through the northern tier of the country going into this weekend. This is Saturday. Uh, and then gets stronger and kind of uh, becomes this big area of blue and then dumps southward into the northeastern United States. This is a week from now, uh, maybe even uh, kind of five to seven days from now. You'll notice uh, early next week this big area of blue showing up uh, over portions of um, the uh, the northeastern United States, much col uh, colder than average air there, uh, and even kind of, you know, squeezing through other parts of the eastern half of the country here. Uh, and I'm watching for the potential for that to bring a storm system with it. Now, uh, again, now through then, you'll notice pretty inactive weather. Again, some rain through the Gulf Coast due to that uh, system in Florida. Uh, but here comes this weekend. Here's that trough I mentioned. Here's a storm system forming uh, up into Canada. So again, still north of the United States, not really uh, anything going for us. Um, but you do note some storms try to fire into portions of uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin going into Saturday and Sunday. That could bring some severe weather. We'll need to watch for that potential. Uh, and then that kind of swings through Michigan. And what happens is uh, that system kind of occludes. So uh, again, kind of dies out, gets into that occluding stage up into the Hudson Bay. Uh, but behind it, or I guess in front of it really, <clears throat> as that trough dips south, another storm system forms along the diverging side of that. Uh, and we get uh, a shot of cold air and uh, a uh, you know, potential for some more rain or maybe even mountain snow there up into the northeast. And in fact, I'll zoom this in. I didn't plan on doing this, but we're running uh, kind of ahead schedule a little bit today anyway. So uh, you folks in the northeast, again, I'm not saying it's going to snow by any means. Definitely not on the I-95 corridor, I can guarantee you that. But uh, you higher elevations in the northeast, kind of look at what the GFS wants to do. Uh, again, there's that first weaker trough this weekend. Uh, but then here comes that second area. Uh, again, you're seeing some rain and you're seeing a little bit of blue mixing in here. Uh, at the end. In fact, look at this, uh, really throwing some precipitation back into that pocket of cold air uh, that is trapped in here. And again, this could very well be our first uh, snowfall of the year through the Northeast about a week or so out from now through Maine, um, Vermont, New Hampshire. Again, we'll watch it. But either way, most folks are going to get a more fall-like atmosphere out of this. And you can notice that here uh, on our dew point map. It stays muggy for most of us through this week, even into this weekend. Again, shots of drier air. You'll notice here's that first kind of weaker trough uh, that swings on through the northern tier uh, during the weekend. But by early next week, look at this big sweeping cold front uh, moving through the entire country. And by the time we get about a week or so out from now, uh, dew points back down into the 40s and 50s for most of us, or really everyone outside of, we'll say, Florida and maybe coastal South Carolina and Georgia. But even then, um, basically all of Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas get in on this nice fall air about a week from now, uh, and that kind of hangs around for a while with maybe even reinforcing shots of that cooler air. Uh, you can even see, uh, see that on the temperature anomaly map. Again, it's going to stay relatively warm and muggy through this week with that zonal flow, uh, but here comes that front. We've got, uh, again, some blue showing up early next week, uh, oozing through the east, and by the time we get to Tuesday and Wednesday, many of us at or below average, and I'll mention, by this point, it's almost October 10th, so uh, you know average highs are coming down pretty significantly anyway, so this is getting well into sweater weather and potentially even jacket territory up through the northeast and through the Great Lakes region, so uh, it's um, definitely a, a sign of changing seasons, something I'm excited to see. Uh, personally, I'm very excited to talk about snow. Well, it's probably the one of my favorite things to do and really uh, what helped my channel grow a lot last winter. So hope, uh, hoping we can do it again this winter uh, with some pretty good snowstorms. Alrighty, folks, uh, not too long of a video today, but again, uh, I think we got through everything that we needed to talk about. So with that said, y'all have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Enjoy it out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.